Welcome back to another episode of Between Us and Y'all. I'm Yasmin. I'm Nafis. And this is our podcast dedicated to having good conversations between a mother and her son. We are so grateful to be doing another episode. This is our third episode. And today we're going to be talking about mental health, specifically depression and self-medication. These are important topics in our family and within our community as well. So we wanted to make sure we touched on it early on. But before we do that, as usual, we like to advertise for our friends and family who have businesses. Today we'll be advertising a business that's owned by my younger brother and his wife, uh, Imam Suleiman Hamid and Shahida Sharif. They have a business called HajPros.com. It's actually called Hajj Pros, sorry. And they take people on Hajj, the sacred pilgrimage, every year. And if he's have some of their tote yeah. bags. This I is a Hodge Pros bag. And he uses that bag on his own. He got that from his uncle. And that bag is what they use um, for people on, on the pilgrimage to keep their things, you know, so everybody's kind of uniform and together. And what's the website? www.hodgepros.com Okay, you can visit the website and learn a little bit more about HodgePros.com and offer your support and in case you're trying to take the pilgrimage when everything opens back up again, um, hopefully you will support my younger brother and his uncle. Alright, so we're going to jump right into our conversation today about depression. Depression is a really sensitive topic. Everyone defines it differently. How would you define depression? I think depression is um, something that is very like a negative a negative feeling that like comes over you. Sometimes it comes over with time, but maybe you're in a situation and it makes you feel bad in many different ways. I think. To me. What about you? Depression for me is um, similar to what you said. It's a it's a feeling and it's a state of mind that takes you outside of your normal state of being. Um, usually, it's something that causes you to feel sad or to be withdrawn and do things differently than you normally would do. It can be caused by lots of different things, but it's a real thing and um, it's a thing that everybody experiences differently. Depression is usually not considered a real thing, though, in our communities. A lot of people might say it's not real, you know, you need to snap out of it. Black people don't experience depression. Do you think depression is really a real thing or, or not? I think it is, and I definitely think in our communities it is a true factor. It is a true thing that we don't acknowledge it. Definitely mm-hmm. same from the older generation and the younger generation. I definitely say from from my for what I see for it, I think definitely the the older generation what they you know see about this generation of the generations that are coming up that you know you, there's no way that you can be depressed because you don't you know what I'm saying you don't understand what what it is to be depressed or mm. or anything like that. So I definitely think in our community that that is a conversation or a a statement that is very true that people in the community don't think that it is a real thing but I definitely think it is Hmm. it's interesting when you said that you know when you said older generation I guess he's talking about my generation (laughs) that you know we don't accept that your generation can have anything to be depressed about and that's I mean I can understand how some people can feel that way because you might be feeling that you know you haven't really experienced enough to be able to really say I'm depressed you know what I mean but I can imagine that there's things you are going through, you know, that will cause depression and cause you to feel sad or want to be withdrawn, you know, so it might be wrong for a person to say there's a certain age that someone has to be in order to really experience depression. So I would say any sort of advice for moms and parents out there, it might not be the best thing to say your child is not experiencing depression if they're telling you that. If they are coming to you to say that they are experiencing it, the best thing to do is just have a conversation about it and find out what they're going through and try and figure out a way to address it. Since people don't accept depression as a real condition, they choose to self-medicate. Have you ever ever self-medicated to cope with a certain feeling and why? Hmm. Yeah, self-medication is a big thing, you know, and... um, it's a thing that 
a lot of people are in denial about, you know, as far as, you know, taking whatever you're going to take to make yourself feel better or doing a certain thing to make yourself feel better. Different people do that. I have done that for sure, unfortunately, with um, food, you know, or with um, maybe something that wasn't so good for my body, you know, or even relationships sometimes, in in my opinion, can turn out to be a form of self-medication where you know, you know, you're doing this thing to try and make yourself feel better about a certain thing. How about you? Definitely. Um, some some of my ways of self medicating is maybe uh, making some art. So I'll definitely um, take out my anger or frustrations or whatever feelings that I'm having on maybe a painting mm-hmm. or maybe a tie dye. I might you know if I'm really angry about something, I I really you know try to express myself through through my art and also. A way that I've been, another um, self medication that I've been kind of flimsy about is the, um, like you said, the use of you know something that makes you feel a certain way. What was that thing? It is a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a marijuana, uh-huh. and uh, the thing is, as for well, it's not been like my whole life or something like that, but it's definitely it definitely started during like college because definitely, at the time I was definitely going through. Um, stuff with with school and also relationships and I was also going through um, some personal things on my own and I wasn't really I didn't really since stuff was moving so fast I wasn't really able to really cope and really been be able to sit down and really feel through all the things that were happening and really express myself so those times that I would use it it would be like oh like basically putting those feelings off and putting those emotions like you know keep pushing it back and not really dealing with that and it would create something that didn't you know create something bigger than it wasn't supposed to be Mm. and I mean it's it's, Nafis is brave you know you're brave to be able to to honestly say you know you've self-medicated and used you know marijuana oftentimes you know in our conscious communities or Muslim families we want to pretend you know that the use of marijuana or any type of drug or anything like that is not a thing that our children are using for some reason. We think we're exempt, you know, from those things that are happening. But I mean, I've even, you know, experienced with, experimented with it for myself in the past, you know, for different reasons, you know, even for pain relief and stuff like that, but definitely for self-medication because I myself have dealt with depression as well. You know, so I can identify and understand how that can happen. It's just really important to be able to have these conversations and be open about what's going on and why you're doing it, you know, all that kind of stuff before you continue. What exactly is self-medication? Okay, so we started talking about self-medication and for the listeners who don't understand what that means when we were talking about it, self-medicating is basically um, finding some type of item or you know whether it's drugs or food or it could be sex it could be something that you're doing to treat yourself for a particular um, condition without getting the advice of a doctor you haven't talked to anyone you haven't seen anyone you know as far as in the medical profession or somebody who can identify a particular issue that you're experiencing and you're using a specific thing to medicate That's what self-medication is. Would you say anything different as far as self-medication? As far as the definition, or are you good with that definition? I think that definition is good. I definitely think um, also with that is like you have it in your own unique way, but I also feel like, and I'll leave it at that. (laughs) All right, so when when you're self-medicating, you can feel a certain way. It's usually, you know, You talked about, you know, how you were using marijuana to cope with certain feelings. When you were doing that, you might have felt like you were open and free, you know, to Mm -hmm. express yourself. Do you find it hard to express yourself in that same way when you're not using self-medication, marijuana, for your specific example? I would say yes and no, depending on the situation. And I definitely say during that time, it was very, uh, it was very hard for me to express myself not being under the influence because um 
definitely like you know well these are my true feelings and you know I'm feeling them for what they are and at the time I wasn't I didn't really have that much confidence to really to be able to be like hey like this is what I'm feeling this is how I'm feeling about this and I need to talk about it it was more so like um I'm trying to figure it out on my own and I don't want nobody to help me and I want to find the answers myself and I, I think sometimes that happens a lot in this generation and mm-hmm. is that we we're always trying to figure out stuff on our own and we're not really leaning on maybe friends or family or something like that because you know we're just trying to be you know the the person that seems like they have everything together and sometimes when you when that happens a lot of stuff starts coming down because you actually don't know what to do so for me that was happening because I didn't know what to do and how to do anything so when I was you know taking marijuana or something like that it was more so like man I feel so comfortable that I'm able just to really like say what I need to say and you know then it's over so what about when you're not using it do you feel like it's a challenge sometimes it is because it's uh it's I think you really feel in the feelings for what it is and it, you are really like like you can actually like feel it and like mm-hmm. like in your body or in your mind or wherever you know whatever but definitely for me it was just like just trying to be be able to differentiate and you know be able to like be confident and say hey you know this is a problem that I need to tackle and I I don't need to put it off or I don't need to keep saying that you know it's not a problem I need to really sit down and really think about it and you know what is you know what is really bugging me about it because sometimes I feel like there's situations that we're in and we don't really see that we don't really see it as a problem and then when something bad that really happens in a situation then we like oh like this is something that wasn't really good Mm -hmm. so before we move on I want to ask you when you were talking I heard you say you know there were things you were dealing with you know what are some things that have come up consistently for you because it might be the same for other people that you dealt with and felt like it it was something you had to self-medicate about um I'll definitely say at the time it was like relationships, mm-hmm. so intimate and platonic relationships. <laughs> um, just differentiating, um, <laughs> it's basically basically sorting out um, what is good and what is bad. And at the time, like what was really good for me in terms of getting older, and you know also in college trying to figure out you know I'm not trying to waste my time. I'm, not, I'm trying to make sure I'm using my time valuable and what you know what is really happening also it was during the time around when Nipsey Hussle had passed and I do listen to some of his music but I also I consider him more as a role model and so at that time I didn't really know how to cope with that and it was still I was still trying to wrap my head around it because it it happened so fast and you know it just happened out of the blue and also stuff with family and just you know just trying to figure out how to you know cope with things and not let things just linger on because sometimes when you let problems and negativity linger on then it can create something much bigger than it's not supposed to that's true you were talking about Nipsey Hussle I know that's the thing that affected a lot of people in different ways you know some people you know didn't necessarily listen to his music like Nafi said but like me as a person who you know I'm from California so I knew about him but I didn't really listen to his music all the time I did also look at him as a person to look up to as far as how he modeled his relationship, you know, with uh, Lauren London, you know, and how he honored it, which was something very different that I, that I saw as far as rappers were concerned. And a rapper who also rapped about drugs, you know, and smoking weed, you know, whatever he was doing. So it's interesting that you brought that up because for, for a lot of people, Nipsey Hussle's death, you know, triggered depression for them. You know, it was something that they had to really realize that they had been dealing with, you know, these emotions and all this different stuff all along. And this death, you know, of this rapper brought it all to a surface where people were actually expressing themselves publicly. And people were saying for the first time they were hearing, you know, black men talk about how they felt, you know, and talk about their sadness and stuff like that. So in that way, you know, I'm grateful for the awareness, you know, that Nipsey Hussle's passing brought about for people, you know, dealing with their depression, whether it was black men or any man, you know, any woman, 
or a young person, young adult, or any person in general that actually started to deal with what they had been dealing with as far as depression and whether they were self-medicating and allowing that to be something that was harming them, you know, to a certain extent, or whether it was something that they found beneficial. Because sometimes self-medication for certain people is not always, you know, terrible. Sometimes people actually choose to self-medicate and find it to be more beneficial than, you know, medication that's been prescribed by a doctor because the medication is not causing, you know, all those side effects that the the, <laughs> the commercial might tell you that this is just for depression, either this one pill, and then it has this whole list of all these different things that it's doing to your body. So you have a whole, you know, argument with certain people who will say that they choose self-medication because they think it's the best medication. And we're not advocating for either. We're just discussing it. It's interesting that you say that um, because everybody's uh, way of dealing with self-medication is different mm -hmm. in time periods. So how... How long do you think is enough time to self-medicate? Man, hmm. I can only speak from experience. And I would say for me, I think it's, you know, whenever I get to the point that I think this thing is harming me in a certain way or causing me, you know, to lose relationships or it's impacting my work, you know, I'm falling asleep at work or I can't concentrate or I need it, you know, in order to do normal things, then I think the time is up for that particular thing. And I need to re, you know, evaluate what's going on and whether this is good for me or bad for me. So for me, I try to pay attention to how it's impacting my behavior, my relationships with other people, and also my relationship with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause if I'm in the house and I'm sitting here crying and eating ice cream and that's my self-medication, all I'm doing is keep crying and crying and crying and I'm not paying attention to you at all. Or when you call, you know, I'm like, can you give me some ice cream every single time you call? You know, it's like, do you care about anything other than that? Mm. What about you? Um, I definitely think when, I think it's when you're able to uh, acknowledge that it is a problem and that you should like have a solution for it. So like, you know, if you're dealing with something, but I, I think definitely when it comes to like self healing, I, I think there shouldn't be no really time period on it because Sometimes a situation may come up and it might go away, but it might come up again. So I definitely think that you should tackle on the pro problem like at, at just at hand, at first, like just when it comes up and just really feel it, when it just be really raw about it and just feel it. And so then you're able to really see how you really feel about it. And so then after you can really talk to yourself and say, well, this is not, you know, this is what I'm taking from the situation, the do's and don'ts and things like that. Have you ever had a friend that you found out was self-medicating and you thought they were doing it for too long? Um, and if you haven't, you don't have to pretend you have, but I mean, I'm just wondering because um, I've had situations like that. You mean to talk about mine while you think about yours? I think, I think it was me on the other hand. Okay. And, um, and to answer that question, it was more so around the time. Well, just kind of in my life. It may be around high school. I was, it was, I was, well, still now, I'm still kind of self-conscious of myself. And also that I was very, I would take a lot of comments and stuff like that very serious. And not saying that I, I, I don't take what people say to me serious, but definitely it would really get to me. It was impacting your self-esteem, you mm -hmm. And so... And so it was just, you know, like to the point where like I was just super, super down all the time and I just didn't, I just didn't want to do anything. So mm. I definitely think that it was, but also it was, it was to the point where like, it was like marks, like my, my body started to show it. And so it was, like what? it was, um, that time where, uh, like during like. It was also when I kind of, kind of, when I had caught the chicken pox also, it was that time where, like, you know, that was happening, but also my body was, like, really stressed out, too. So it was showing, it was showing in a way. Like, your body was showing signs of the depression. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. A lot of people don't pay attention to their bodies, so they don't even know. So it's good that you even identified something was happening, you know, as far as a breakout or something like that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are not paying attention to, you know, the physical, you know, reactions of depression. 
it's not always just in your mind. It could be, you know, that you're gaining weight or losing weight. You don't have the ability to eat, you know, or you're having headaches all the time. You know, you're breaking out into rashes and stuff like that. So it's, it's important to pay attention. I'm glad that you actually knew that something was happening outside of the chicken pox, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Something was going on with you. <laughs> So let's talk about specifically um, depression. We've been talking about it all along, you know, casually. But would you say you've actually dealt with depression and, and specifically what was it like? What was a time that actually you knew this was depression, you know, as opposed to something else? Um, I don't remember really the time period, mm -hmm. but I can remember the feeling. It's just a feeling of, like to me in my opinion for me it's not like not feeling like I have the answer or not having the confidence to maybe do certain things maybe in a sense talking you know trying to flirt with somebody or trying to hang out with friends in a certain way or trying to do certain things also um that affected me in expressing myself to you it was like you know since I'm feeling this way or you know I'm depressed I didn't mean to put quotations on that but I'm um, being depressed it was like you know like I'm not really comfortable with sharing how I really feel because I don't I don't know I don't know how to cope with myself so why would it to me in, in a sense I was the the thoughts that were in my mind was if I don't know how to feel how to control it why would I you know bring somebody else in and then I was in a sense I was kind of being stubborn about it because I didn't want still to this day now I'm not I'm not I'm still dealing with how you know trying to get outside help and like or lean on people like my mom or family members and trying to you know have have them help me in certain ways but also like trying to I'm so kind of stuck in the mind of trying to figure it out on my own and just figure it out and that you know affects me sometimes because like if I don't have the answer then I just leave it alone mm. what about you yeah I mean I can say I, I go back and forth with depression now you know and the, the way that I knew it was depression and not something else was because it would come on, the feelings would come on at times that I didn't expect it, you know, and I wasn't in control of it. It would be certain things that I started to pay attention to that let me know they were triggers, you know, whether it was for me specifically, it could be the memory, you know, of my mom, you know, and I'm, you know, maybe watching some type of film and it triggers the idea that my mother's deceased you know she's not here you know to experience seeing you grow up or physically being here to you know to offer me advice and stuff like that um also one way that helped me know that it was depression and not something else was when it was becoming hard to snap out of it you know i'm usually in control of how i'm feeling and what i'm doing and you know i know you know throughout the whole day what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it and when I got to the point that I'm like I don't want to do anything and I can't really change you know how I'm feeling right now you know that's what started letting me know this could be depression you know and then I started actually going to a therapist instead of trying to just self-medicate and deal with things on my own which I think is good advice for anyone listening don't be ashamed if you are interested in seeing a therapist or, you know, a doctor or find somebody to talk to, you know, where you're not dealing with it by yourself so that you can have some way of actually getting through what you're dealing with. You know, it's not something that you have to just deal with by yourself, you know, forever. So, so it was something I touched on about able to be expressing to like maybe family members or something like that. So what? ways have you developed to express what you were experienced with families or friends and what did that look like mm -hmm. and I guess for me yeah, uh, um, towards like as I got older I've been more able to accept the fact like you know you know it's okay to be sad you know it's okay to be angry it's okay to be feeling different emotions and you just have to experience it and express it because if you don't express it then you know that eats away at you in different ways and, you know in your creativity and your passion or your confidence and your great you know whatever that you, you you do so I definitely think for me like I it there's you know there's no wrong answer and there's nothing you know if somebody really cares for you then they're always here to listen so for me is you know I in me sharing my ways of 
Um, or, or what I'm dealing with with friends and family, that's my way of being vulnerable and it's showing them like, hey, I need advice with this or that or what do you think about this? And that. so I try my best to let those people know what I'm going through so there's no anything that just comes out of the blue or anything like that. All right, so for me, um, I have a few a few steps. You know, one of the first steps is for me to identify what the problem is and to understand what the what is the violation basically you know I'm, I'm trying to understand okay am I what am I sad about what is the reason why I'm sad and you know in regards to a violation what is the violation this is having in my life right now you know is it causing me to not be able to get up is it causing me to not be productive is it causing me to have a strain in my relationship with you you know am I not listening in the same way and then after I identify that I have to think what what are my needs right now you know, I got to give a shout out to my friend, Anana Harris Paris, who is the queen of self-care. She has a book written about the topic and a day that's dedicated to self-care in Atlanta. And um, one of the things that she talks about is to speak to yourself and understand what you're dealing with and come up with baby steps for your self-care. So for my self-care, mine look, look the same as yours. Right. Mine, The way that mine looks is... I try to always change my environment. So if I'm inside, I might try to step outside. Or if I'm, you know, in sitting at my desk, I'll get up and take a walk. I'll change the environment because that helps for me. Also, one of the things that helps for me is exercise. Um, uh, that's one of the ways that I express myself in my exercise group, actually, because I can get there and I can talk to somebody and say, you know, I'm dealing with this right now. I really need like five reps, five extra reps because I'm real stressed out. And, you know, the trainer might help me with that. As far as you, one of the ways that I've learned to express that has been to take a ride with you. Sometimes we'll be take a ride quietly. We're not saying anything. We'll pick up that something's going on, you know, and we'll talk about it, but just being, you know, being around you or, you know, somebody else that I love, having them close and not having to talk sometimes helps for me. And then, of course, cooking. You know, I try not to um, have bad feelings when I'm cooking. So one of the things that I try to do is play a nice song that will put me in a nice vibe so I'm not putting that negative energy in food, you know. But I can admit that making bread has been a thing that's been a definite stress reliever because you got to punch and pull and all that kind of stuff. And you let out your emotions with that way. So that's some of the ways that I've done it. And also prayer. One of the things I, ought to, I try to make sure I do all the time is ask for guidance and direction and what I'm feeling and to make sure that nothing that I'm saying or doing is going to be harmful to myself or to the people around me and you, you know, and, and ask for guidance on how to get out of this if this is going to be a thing that's going to cause me damage to my character or myself in the future. Anything else for you? No. All right, so what, this has been, you know, an interesting topic we definitely wanted to touch on it, you know, because there's so many people, mothers and sons, who are dealing with depression and self-medication to the point that they are not seeking help or they don't have help. You know, they might be alone. They might be, you know, dealing with abuse from outside sources or they could be abusing each other, you know, locally. Luckily, we're not doing that with each other. But we wanted to touch on this topic so we can make sure that if you are a mother of a son or a son is talking to his mom, you could figure out different questions if you didn't have them on ways to touch on this subject. And your topics and your questions, you know, dealing with depression and things that relate to it might not be exactly the same. But this was our idea. We hope it's been helpful. This has been another episode of Between Us and Y'all. We hope that it has been beneficial to you. And thank you guys for tuning in with us. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good day, and we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.